you know, the fact that why I couldn't come forth come about my human trafficking experience in China that I ex experienced is because South Korea still penalized the victims, not the perpetrators. If you get raped, they blame you to be dirty and ruined, not for the man who raped these girls. Kim Jong-un gets really bothered by defectors, so he started ordering North Korean intelligence that capture them back and bring them back to North Korea. These defectors who's been speaking out and the ones who didn't make a big name, actively every single day they use their voice, their freedom to fight for others' freedom. 40, I mean, 42 of them has been kidnapped by North Korean agents and sent back to North Korea. Hi guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Yemi Park. I'm a North Korean defector, human rights activist. So today guys, in this video, I will talk about something that made me not able to sleep last night. I read this article on Marie Claire called the Vanishing Act. I will attach the article below and you will actually know why. I will finally talk about a woman who completely vanished into North Korea after her escape and also the lady that I knew before. Her name is Im Ji Hun. She's around the same age as me. She escaped North Korea in 2014 and two months later she arrived in South Korea. Uh, and she started appearing in the TV show in 2015 and just one day she was gone in 2007. And I will talk to you about her from the beginning till the end, really what happened to her. Why after her escape, her escape with her life on the line and she went back. And so first of all, for the last five years guys, 42 people has been re uh, sent to North Korea. And mostly it's all likely about the kidnap from the North Korean regime. So Im Ji Young was very beautiful young lady. 그러니까 부모님한테 용돈을 달라고 어머, 하면 어머니가 야 먹고 살기 힘들어 죽겠는데 무슨 용돈에 저리가 막확 밀칩니다. 그럼 용돈 달라고 했다가 한디 오도 먹고 저희 구석에 와가지고 아 어떻게 하지 하고 막 머리 굴리다가 용돈 어디서 나야 되겠고 하니까. Who also went to no army in North Korea in 2000. 15, the Kim Jong Un made a military service compulsory for women as well. Not as well as I mean, of course, the same for men. But beforehand, women didn't have to go. But now in North Korea, everybody needs to go to military serve in for decade to for the nation. So she went to military and experienced unbelievable horrific things that. Some things that she shared in South Korea while when she was free was that, you know, in the military, the literally soldiers treat the female soldiers as toys. Um, male soldier does something royal to the country, reward him with a female soldier to just be raped by them. So she experienced horrific things in the army and escaped. As soon as she got to South Korea for the first one year, she really struggled like every year. You know, North Korean defectors have a lot of harder time to adjust to the country and she was not an exception. So therefore, she worked in the bars to support herself. And mostly guys, I really want you to understand that when North Koreans escape, they, nobody really, most of them do not say like, oh, I'm gonna go and have a good life for myself. They do it to help their family members left behind. Usually they sacrifice their life and go to South Korea, go to China, even choose to become a prostitute and make money so they can send it back to North Korea so their family members don't have to risk their life and escape or even starve to death. And in Ji Young's case too, she loved her mother and father, her family so much. As soon as she made South Korea, she did everything she could in her power to make money and send it to her family. I started knowing about her when I was in South Korea getting on TV shows myself. Uh, I was on a different show called Now On My Way To Meet You. This show was a model from a, a show called the Chat With Beautiful Ladies From The North. And they bring a lot of beautiful North Korean girls who are young and talented and, and mostly they thought pretty and 
giving them a beautiful clothes and put on a professional makeup and put on this studio and make them to chat with southern men and South Korean celebrities. But the motto of these shows were more entertainment. And so Im Ji Young got on a different show that I didn't get on back then. And I knew of her, I think, I don't think I met her, but I definitely knew of her. I, we had a lot of common friends and we worked around the same time in Korea, in the same industry. And, and then, so out of nowhere, around 2000, earlier 2017, there are still like the North Korean regime started a smear campaign at her. Of course, they did the same thing to me. North Korea, of course, told me that I was CIA spy, that I was trained by the West. I'm lying about North Korea. And, you know, my father is a human trafficker. My mother is a prostitute. I mean, like literally every single thing that you can think of, they, they try to destroy my credit. And they did the same thing with her. So North Korea, while her fame was going up and up, they, uh, North Korea created some uh, dummy forced smear campaign saying that she was on a porn pornography. And when she found out, she got so upset, she reported it to police and they verified that it wasn't her. It was just North Korea and somehow they copied the photos and, you know, photoshopped the photos and tried to ruin her credit. But this is another point about being a North Korean woman in, in South Korea right now. You know, the fact that why I couldn't come forth come about my human trafficking experience in China that I ex experienced is because South Korea still penalized the victims, not the perpetrators. If you get raped, they blame you to be dirty and ruined, not for the men who raped these girls. So she kind of faced the same fate and people started raising fingers at her, calling her dirty, and it was such a hard time for her. Despite that, she made a blog to Jonner about her diary when she was in North Korean military. Now the blog uh, server, they dropped it, they kind of deleted her account. So while as well as she was being on the show, she's still doing this advocacy work that the things that she experienced in North Korean military, the inhumane things that women go through, she journaled them a lot of people to learn about North Korea and she had a, this burning desire to speak out for her countrymen. Kim Jong-un takes North the defection way more personally than the Kim Jong-il. Kim Jong-un gets really bothered by defectors. So he started ordering North Korean intelligence that capture them back and bring them back to North Korea. And a month before, Kim Jong-un told the security in North Korea to like, bring the more defectors back, and this is when it happened. So she got kind of trapped when she was, uh, so in her bank account, by the time when she went back to North Korea, literally she got $20,000 in her bank account, and she had a nice apartment in Seoul, and all her belongings were there. And one day she got a call from China that, from her broker that she used to send the money back to her family members back in North Korea, saying that when she was trying to send $10,000 to her family, the broker said there's some issues with uh, transferring the money. So can you come to China and retrieve the money? And this was a trap set by North Korea's intelligence in China. They were trying to kidnap her there. So she literally took a flight without like planning to ever leave, left all her stuff, belongings, everything. She took a flight to China in 2007, in the spring, like around April. And of course, when she went there, it was trapped, they kidnapped her and smuggled back in her to North Korea. Three months later, we all saw her on the North Korean national TV in 2017. She saying that she was uh, forced, she was tricked, she was kidnapped by South Korea and how grateful she was that she was forgiven for her sin. And she calling herself that I'm a, I'm a trash, I'm a human scum, despite all my this, you know, faults that my dear leader forgave me and gave me a second chance and how grateful she felt that she returned her to motherland. <laughs> And 
and it made me all of us like who's been advocating for human rights and raising awareness about what is happening to nursing people shocked that like this is true that our journey hasn't ended so many people now calling me like oh you must feel good that you're free now and they don't get it that i'm not actually free guys there is a government and dictator still trying to actively silence me through all kinds of smear campaigns saying that I'm a liar, I'm paid by CIA. And exactly the same thing to her that they said she was, you know, a prostitute and trying to discredit her credibility. And she, of course, she's a liar. And then when she went back to North Korea, in her video, she like looked like having a bruises in her face and covered with really white white makeup, and her hair was cut short, and her appearance changed dramatically. And so it just keep I mean thinking, you know, this she's completely forgotten from the rest of the world, and if she didn't escape and make it in the first place, we would not even she exists. Im Ji Hyun existed. And I just hope that in some way that we all can honor her life, that the things that she gave in, given to the world, she was so bravely came out and shared about human rights abuses happening in North Korea and did everything she could to educate the public and try to free her homeland. And of course, the things that she said when she returned to North Korea in those propaganda videos is about, of course, denouncing South Korea denouncing democracy and freedom and because literally a, a gun is like a, like right there if she doesn't say the right thing she's gonna get shot and that's why she has to do it the most like a bothering thing for me about this whole instance is like how the media the world reacted South Korea I mean I'm so grateful that Marie Claire like I mean, reported on this topic in a such an honest and integrated way. South Korea reported this issue as if she was some. Uh, I didn't even not know myself that. I actually entire time I thought, okay, she was a prostitute, and so what if she was? I mean, everybody has to do it to survive. Like if you were born in a good family and with tons of money to get a good education, who chooses that life path? And we are living in a culture where we blaming and point fingers at a victim. And I, I actually thought, so what? I mean, what's the problem? But of course, in South Korea, with that kind of history, you can never get a second chance. And that is exactly the reason why I couldn't reveal it. Like, I no sane man would marry me knowing that I was trafficked and raped by other men like when I was a teenager. And no sane in-laws would take me like that. And so I thought because of that smear campaign, I thought she kind of quit her career and chose to go back to like hiding in China, but it wasn't true. The, the photos that North Korea regime spread online against her wasn't even true because the police verified it. And the other thing is that I, was, I feel so angry that I was so ignorant, didn't do my diligence to look for what actually happened to her. And the fact that when she went to China, it was, it was that was also a trap that they kidnapped her. And the, the other thing is that for the last five years, guys, the, these defectors who's been speaking out and the ones who didn't make a big name, actively every single day they use their voice, their freedom to fight for others' freedom. Forty, I mean, forty-two of them has been kidnapped by North Korean agents and sent back to North Korea. I know like I can be killed any minute and I don't know how many traps gonna be ahead of me in my road like but the thing is I think we as long as we are aware and as long as we have this voice I hope that we we keep talking about them we honor their sacrifice and hopefully if you continue to do that maybe the change will come so I just did it this is a video for me to express my gratitude to Im ji -hyun. and also I just don't even I can't even fathom what she must go through and if a lot of people think she got executed after that video because all North Korean regime needed is her on the video denouncing South Korea and showing to the people and 
brainwashing people. And this is like what Kim Jong-un has been done. He's so psychopath that, you know, he's been terribly good at we kind of brainwashing North Koreans. So he would literally capture these defectors and send back them and then tell the South North Koreans that, you know, once you escape your motherland, you know, there's so much discrimination, you are never gonna be treated like equal, you know, equal standing or person. And only thing, only way you can survive is being a prostitute and being raped and being sold. So therefore, do not ever give up this revolution and fight for your country until you die. In some ways, what's so painful about this is like a lot of it is true. When the factors escape, it is so true that life is not getting better than North Korea, being in North Korea in so many ways, right? Like I was getting out of the most oppressed country in the world and getting into owned by the human traffickers. And what is the difference between owned by a dictator or owned by a human trafficker? North Koreans never get to have any saying over their own life or dignity. They never get any basic human rights. And then, of course, when they even get after China passing it and go to South Korea, of course, what happens? The South Koreans discriminate them, making fun of our northern accents and keep saying that we are we are spies we are we are like you know not pr trustworthy people not a dirty people and a lot of ways these girls can find a way to survive make the ends meet is also it is true that going into prostitution in south korea as much as i don't want to like talk about this it is true even why not till this day like literally they say Anywhere, like if there's South Korea above the passing Seoul, the capital of South Korea, all the regions, if you get a call for the call girl, they say like 88, 90% of them are North Korean defectors. Because South Korean society doesn't embrace them like equal human beings, treat us like second citizens, and does treat us like uh, trash. So. It is so upsetting how the current situation is for North Korean people and in a way so much that she has shared about after North Korea is also true. And but still the most important thing is that she never chose to go back. It was a it was a crime. She they kidnapped her. And now we we may never see her again and I pray God that she's alive and someday the dictatorship goes away and we can all meet her and hear what really happened to her. So guys, thank you so much for making me visible, make me be heard and hearing our story and acknowledge that we exist. So that's, yeah, thank you again for watching and I look forward to seeing you guys all next time.